Thank you, Pastor. Everybody praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to the final day of this glorious transformation through Christ crusade. And I pray if you missed anything from the first day until the fifth day, this final day, you will have your portion. Your portion of salvation, your portion of healing, your portion of miracle, your portion of heavenly power, your portion of answered prayer. It's of that hand, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, a great and a mighty God. And tonight, you are going to do wonderful things in every life. And everything you've done tonight is the climax. And we pray there will be truly glorious transformation in every life in Jesus' name. Confirm your word in every life. Do miracles in every life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we are considering glorious transformation through Christ's glorious triumph. He came to this world. And he did what no other person on earth from the time of creation until this time, what no other person has done. He triumphed over sin for you, over sickness for you, over Satan for you, over suffering for you, and over eternal death for you and because he's done that we have transformation through the triumph of Christ on the cross of Calvary look at Romans chapter 12 verse 1 I beseech you therefore therefore because of what he has done therefore because of Calvary therefore because of his death and triumph on the cross of Calvary. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We don't just come to Calvary and then that's all. No. Because of Calvary, we now present our bodies, our hands, our feet, our mouth, our eyes, our ears, every part of our body. We present that, present that unto the Lord. And it becomes not a dead sacrifice, the dead sacrifice of the children of Israel, the living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God and that is our reasonable service look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says and be not conformed to this world if you have met Christ a change has come if you have met the Lord who died for you on the cross of Calvary and you are born again and you are saved and your sins are forgiven. And now, because of the transformation of the Lord, it says, be not conformed to this world. But here is the word now, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because of salvation, it renews your mind. He renews your heart, he renews your life, he renews your language, he renews the character of everyone that has come to the Lord. And that the central point of the crusade where having JCK at this time that we are transformed. 
by the renewing of our mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, when that transformation actually takes place as a result of salvation, what do we see? What do we observe in the life of anyone who has now been transformed by the Lord? Look at verse 9. In verse 9, it says, Let love be without dissimulation. No dishonesty anymore. That's the transformation. It used to be a life of deception, a life of hypocrisy, but now, because we're transformed, if we're really, truly transformed, let love be without hypocrisy, let love be without pretense, let love be without any drama. Let it be real, abhor that which is evil. Now we're born again, we reject every sin that is evil cleave to that which is good. Look at verse 10. In verse 10 it says, be kindly affectioned to one another. That's the transformation we're talking about. No cruelty, no hatred, no hurt for anybody, whether emotional or it's physical. Now, you are kindly affectioned to one another with brotherly love no more tribalism now he's my brother now she is my sister and we live and we behave if there is transformation things have changed old life the old life is gone there's brotherly love in honor preferring one another that means there is no greed, there is no covetousness, there is no self-centeredness that, you know, I want to be above, I want to push everybody down if I still have that kind of attitude. Push everybody down, push everybody away, hurt them, climb on them, march on them to get to where you want to go. There's no transformation. The transformation that Lord has wrought and the transformation he does in us is now in honor, in privilege. We now prefer other people. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, not lawful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. You know, in the past, before the transformation came, we were fervent in business, fervent in making money, fervent in establishing this, establishing that, fervent because we want to look for something for ourselves. Now we transfer all that fervency from the business of the world, and now we are fervent in the spirit and we are serving the Lord, the heart that you used to give to all those things of the world, you bring the heart, you bring the seriousness, you bring the zeal to the service of the Lord. In verse 12, verse 12 says, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, temptation and trial, continuing instant in prayer verse 13 tells us distributing to the necessity of the saints giving to hospitality that's the transformation but if we only care for ourselves if we only think of ourselves i want to be happy i'm happy I, but other people getting happy uh -uh, i don't know about that one if they want to be happy let them go and find their happiness not through me no there's no transformation in that the transformation we have is that we distribute to the necessity of others we're giving to hospitality verse 14 verse 14 says 
that now that we are new, now that we are different, now that we are children of God, a change so comes in our lives, a transformation so comes in our lives that now what we were before we are no more. The selfishness we had before we are no more. And the lives the Lord we had before no more. Give me verse 14 now. Verse 14. In verse 14, bless them which persecute you. We used to curse them before transformation came. Is persecuting me, is throwing stones at me. We say, send it back to the, se to the sender. That's what we used to do. He wanted to knock me, Lord, knock him. That's what our lives were in the past. But now, because of the change, because of the transformation, when we bleed, we bless them. When we're persecuted, we bless them. When they hurt us, we help them. That is the transformation. If that transformation is not there, we cannot claim I'm changed, I'm saved, I'm converted. The conversion makes us to be totally different from what we were before. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Don't curse them even in your heart. Don't curse them in the local language because now a change, a difference has come. And that change and that difference now makes you to bless and you do not cause. Verse 15, in verse 15, rejoice with them that do rejoice. I have my own challenge, I have my own problem. If he is up here, I'm not happy yet. Until this happens, there's no smile on my face. It says, no, if we do like that, the change has not come. The transformation has not come. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Verse 16, in verse 16, be of the same mind one toward another. We're not, you know, contradicting people and causing conflict in the lives of people. And we never agreed in the past. We never agreed with every, anyone. But here is what salvation brings. Here is what transformation brings. Because now we are of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things. Pride was a life description in the past. High things. We mind high things. We, we, we projected ourselves. We promoted ourselves. We lifted ourselves up above everybody, all the other people, them there, them there. But a change has now come. And a change makes us not to mind high things, <clears throat> but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. That's a change. That the transformation that you're not going about, I'm wise, they are unwise. I am high, they are low. And we, we carry that too much in our past lives. But now, glorious transformation through Christ's glorious triumph. And because he triumphed, we too now. We triumph and we're no more carrying on the pride of life. We're no more wise in our conceit. And in verse 17, verse 17 says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. You cannot say you are born again, whoever you are. When you think, when you feel, 
when you say he did evil to me he will know i am the son of the soil he doesn't understand i will deal with him no there's no change there that's the natural man that's the sinful man that's the evil man when there is transformation all that will change that she recompense to no man evil for evil provide things honest in the sight of all men verse 18 in verse 18 if it be possible as much as lies in you live peaceably with all men what it means is trouble will not start from you confusion conflict fighting violence will not start from you as much as is possible if it's possible as much as it lies in your power you live peaceably with all men verse 19 in verse 19 dearly beloved that's the language for those who are born again that's the language for those who are brethren that's the language for those who are now in christ dearly beloved avenge not yourself look at that look at that somebody has hurt you somebody has done has said something you should that they shouldn't have said concern somebody played a trick on you and gave you counterfeit and you discover uh, look at this man you know he's playing with his life he gave me counterfeit the lord said you will not avenge yourself but rather give place unto us for it is written vengeance is mine I will repay, leave it in, in God's hand, says the Lord. In verse 20, in verse 20, it says, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If thine enemy hunger, tell me what to do. Only those who are transformed can do that. Only those who are changed can do that only those who are born again they are saved somebody throws something at you and you say sorry what happened have i done something that hurts you you throw that thing and it frowns at you you smile back you say god bless you they say the fellow is now dense he doesn't know how to fight back anymore. No, he knows how to fight back. Anybody can fight. But the entrance of Christ in his heart, in his life, that has made the change that he doesn't want to throw any stone at anybody anymore because if your enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shout he calls of fire on his head he'll feel so guilty and the burning sensation will be in his conscience meanwhile you have peace in your mind because you are transformed in verse 21 it says be not overcome of evil but overcome evil with good if you have had any blessing of transformation here during this gck all that is what has happened unto you a change a transformation a conversion salvation that is what salvation brings in our lives once i was like that but now I am like this. I pray the Lord will effect all that meaningful transformation in every life, even tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Glorious transformation through Christ's glorious triumph. We're looking at three things here. Number one, transforming conversion through 
genuine salvation. There's fake salvation. You don't see any conversion. You don't see any transformation in a fake conversion or salvation. But when the salvation is genuine, you have transforming conversion through genuine salvation. Number two, trustworthy continuation. Trustworthy continuation in his gracious steps. You now continue in the steps of Christ. You are now following Christ and you're asking yourself because you are now transformed, because you are now converted, because you are now saved, you are asking yourself, what will Christ do? And those gracious steps of Christ is what you now follow. Trust worthy continuation in his gracious steps number three is true commitment to his great service he has a service and immediately you pick up his service and you have commitment commitment that is true true commitment to his great service. We are coming to number one. Number one, transforming conversion through genuine salvation. Make sure you are not carrying an experience that's counterfeit, that is fake, that is not real. Conversion that brings genuine salvation. We're looking at Acts chapter 15, looking at verse 3, it says, I'm being brought on their way by the church. They pass through, they pass through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren, declaring conversion. What kind of conversion? When it says those people that they went out to minister to, Barabbas and Saul, separated to the work I've given unto them. As they came back, they were telling the people were converted, the people were converted, things were different now transformation are taking place now they explained in verse 28 in verse 28 it says for it seemed good to the holy ghost and to us to lay no to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things what are those necessary things in verse 29 verse 29 that ye abstain from meat offered to idols. That was, you know, what they were eating before. They were idol worshippers and they would eat things offered to idols. But now that a change are taking place, now that transformation are taking place, you will abstain from any meat related to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication from which if you keep yourselves ye you shall do well fear ye well i said fear ye well amen say good amen that is the evidence of genuine conversion genuine salvation that all the bad filthy things you were doing before now a change has come and because a change has come the way i used to go i don't go like that anymore the things i used to drink i drink them no more the things i used to eat things sacrificed to idols i eat them no more and he tells us in acts chapter 3 verse 19 acts chapter 3 verse 19 repent ye therefore and be converted 
Repent ye therefore and be converted. Being converted means that the sins of the past, the evil of the past, the carelessness of the past, and the evil we're doing in the past, repent. If you repent, you'll not be going in that direction again. If you are transformed, you'll not be going that direction again. If a change has come in your life, you'll not be going that direction again. Be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, it said that God unto you first, God having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you. What kind of blessing? In turning away every one of you from his iniquities. That's conversion. That genuine salvation. In turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Look at James chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 19. James chapter 5. Somebody claimed already was a christian i just came to the crusade i'm a christian i'm born again and i go to a good assembly look at this brethren if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him which somebody claims to be born again and now he errs from the truth he goes away from righteousness he goes away from honest holy righteous living is gone away from the truth and it says and one convert him he still needs conversion the backslider needs conversion the sinner needs conversion and those who are just claiming religion hate salvation and um, erroneous salvation, fake salvation, without the real life of the believer is gone astray. And one has to combat him. Look at verse 20. Let him know that he, that he which converted the sinner is one of us. He was one of us in verse 19. But he went astray. He went into sin. He went into transgression. He went to pick up the vomit that he had before. Now you go to him. Or he comes to this crusade. And he realizes I've gone astray. He realizes I have backslidden. And he's brought back to the Lord. Let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins that's what happened the change the transformation that's what happened to the thessalonians first thessalonians chapter one and i'm reading from verse five. First thessalonians chapter one reading from verse five our gospel came not unto you in word only but also in power when you hear the word of god and all that you're looking at is the you know service salvation sanctification and you're looking at the structure of the message and it does nothing to you just excites you that one you're hearing the gospel in word only but when it comes with power and you understand that word is talking about you and you repent and you turn and your life becomes different totally changed that's when the word comes to you in power but also in power and in the holy ghost and in much assurance as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake look at verse 6 in verse 6 and ye became followers of us that's conversion 
That's conversion. That's transformation. He became. They were not like that before. They were sinful before. They were idolatrous before. And they were evil. Evil in nature. Evil in life. Evil in action. But now they dropped all the evil. And you became followers of us. And of the Lord. Having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. It happened to them, it will happen to you. It changed. And that's the beauty of the gospel. Transformation. That's the beauty of the gospel. So that it's not just religion, religion, religion only. There is the grace of God that comes into your life. And there is transformation. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, So that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Other people look at you now and they begin to compare your salvation with what they call their own salvation. And they say a salvation is different. Makes him walk in the way of righteousness. And because of that, they want to re-examine themselves and come afresh to the Lord so that they can have genuine salvation. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, for from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith, living faith, your faith, dynamic faith, your faith, transforming faith, your faith to God, to God's word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. Verse 9, in verse 9, for they themselves show a false. What manner of entering in we add unto you and how ye turned. Everybody could see the evidence was there. They turned. The experience was real. They turned. That is the transformation we're talking about. Glorious transformation. And it happens through Christ glorious triumph they turn to god from idols to serve the living and true god in verse 10 they were now waiting for the coming of the lord and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. Uh, that's the example we're seeing in the Bible of people that heard the gospel. And the hearing of the gospel made an impact in their lives. They had a change, a transformation, real salvation. And today, God will give it to you. I said, God will give it to you. There's no joy in. I got saved, but there's no change, but there's no transformation. I was there. I went to that crusade, and it was a wonderful, I even saw the preacher myself, but no change, no conversion, no real salvation. It will be a pity if that happens to you. It will not happen to you like that. A change will come in your life. When you are dishonest, you're not going to be honest now. And where you were dubious, fraudulent, fraudulent, all that will vanish away in Jesus' name. We'll come to point number two now. Point number two, the trustworthy continuation in his gracious steps. You know what the Lord wants? He wants you, he doesn't want you to make him like a restaurant that you go in there you eat and then you forget the restaurant he wants you to come yes and take the healing yes and take the salvation yes and take the blessing and to continue 
with him. And that is the joy of anyone that says, I was converted. Okay, that's an experience on a day now. From day to day, are you continuing? That is what the Lord is wanting to see in our lives. Trustworthy continuation in his gracious steps. We're looking at First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking, you come to the Lord. This is what your life comprised of in the past. But now that you come to the Lord, we lay aside that load, that heavy weight. We lay aside all, not some, not some, all. All malice, we lay that aside. Amen. Amen. All guile, hypocrisies, we lay everything aside. Amen. Amen. All envies, I envy that. I envy him because of his car. I envy him because of his wife. I envy her because of her husband. I envy because of the place that he now has in the nation. Uh -uh. If we're born again, if we're children of God, there's no envy anymore. Lay that aside and all evil speaking. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it says, as newborn babes, when we're born again, newborn babes, when we're transformed, newborn babes, when we're converted, newborn babes, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby you're so interested now in the scriptures and the word of god now you are born again you wake up in the morning you don't just rush out like you used to you reach the word you desire this is same milk of the word because it is that milk of the word that will feed the newborn babes and you don't uh, just say, okay when i go to church on sunday i'll hear the word of god that's good that's good but what if you age only once a week? How will you grow? You become anemic. You become emaciated. But every day you take the word of God, you read the word of God, and you understand what you are reading. Not just that I've read the Bible. Do you understand what you read? You apply what you have read. You apply it to your life and you claim the promise in what you have read. And then you give yourself, commit yourself to the Lord that you will obey what you have read. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby. Look at verse 3. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. If so be, if truly you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, that his grace has come to your life, here will be the practice of your life that you are taking in the word of God. And anytime you are in the presence of God, you are in the presence of God. If the phone rings now, if you are with the president of our country or the governor of our state and is talking to you, will you take your phone and excuse me, Mr. Governor, I need to answer this man. While you are talking to him, his security people will, you know, take you out. You are not serious. You are not matured. But we're talking to God, we're praying to God, the telephone is ringing, God, excuse me, then you pick up the phone and you do some business and God is waiting, that's no quiet time, that's no devotion, you give honor to the Lord and you give respect unto the Lord, if so be, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, look at verse 21, in verse 21, for even hereunto 
were ye called because Christ also suffered for us and he says leaving us an example that he should follow his steps after you are born again you're not looking at one hero there one man there you're looking at Jesus and any situation you come to what will Christ do any challenge you have in your life you want to respond to that challenge you're asking yourself what will Christ do in your relationships in your interaction everything that you do in life you're asking what will Christ do is let us an example that he should follow his steps it tells us in Galatians chapter 2 and I'm reading here from verse 20 Galatians chapter 2 reading from verse 20 I am crucified here's a believer talking I am crucified here's the one that is following after the steps of Christ every day here is a testimony of a real child of God I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me that should be an example for us and that should be the lifestyle we follow that Christ liveth in me if he's living in me whatever you will not do I will not do whatever you will not do you will not do he will not do evil he will abstain from every appearance of evil if you're a real child of God, you are continually following after the Lord. That's exactly what you do. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me in first john chapter 2 here we're reading from verse 1 first john chapter 2 from verse 1 my little children these things write i unto you that you sin not here is the new life of the true believer the new life of the one that says i come I surrender my heart, I surrender my life unto the Lord. Little children just born again at the crusade and of course the older believers. Here is the word of the Lord that you sin not and if any man sin, a by carelessness, a by forgetfulness. If any man sin, we have an advocate for the Father jesus christ the righteous look at verse 2 in verse 2 and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world verse 3 tells us and hereby we do know that we know him Hereby we know that we have real conversion, that we have genuine salvation, that we know him as Savior, that we know him as a Redeemer. Hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. And that's how we know now. People see you, they see that you are now gentle, you are now honest, you are now trustworthy, and they say, what happened, what happened to you? You say, I met Christ, and Christ touched my life and changed my life. Because of that now, day after day, week after week, I'm no more Sunday, Sunday Christian. You're a Christian, a believer, every day, every moment and hereby do we know that we know him if we keep his commandments in verse 4 it says he that says i know him 
and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. He that says, I'm born again, I'm a child of God, and I'm a follower of Christ, and is not keeping the commandments of the Lord, who says, love your neighbor as yourself, is full of hatred, full of malice, and full of animosity, is full of that fighting spirit. The lion, running lion, still dwells on the inside of him. And he says, I'm born again. No, you are not born again. No matter who you are. And no matter what you do in any church, any denomination, he that says, I know him, and keepeth not his commandment, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, but whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, he that saith, he abideth in him. Ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Jesus becomes your standard in the day and in the night. And you say you are saved, look at him, you ought to walk even as Christ walked. You say you are converted, you say, I was there. Glorious transformation. And the glorious transformation has happened to me. You ought to walk even as say what first John chapter three. I'm reading from verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Verse 2. In verse 2, it says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Amen. Amen. We shall be like him. Another amen. amen. Religious people who are just religious, they come to crusade, they come to church, they do Easter, they do Christmas, and they do harvest time, just religion. But there's no genuine salvation. They will not see him on that final day. It's not coming for hypocrites when he comes. It's not coming for secret sinners. Was he living in sin? It's coming for the people who have had conversion, who have had salvation, real salvation. You'll be among the number. Yeah. I am in the number. I am in the number of those who are saved by grace and deliver their lives by grace. Look at verse 3 here. Verse 3 says, And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure, will walk in the same gracious steps of Christ. When we're truly born again, he gives us the grace, he gives us the strength, he gives us the determination. Here is Christ my Savior, and I'm going to live like him. You'll be among the number tonight. And when you go out of this place, the word of God will be ringing in your heart. You will live as a Christian ought to live. We're coming to point number three. Point number three is true commitment to his great service. True commitment to his great service. You know, when you meet the Lord and you have salvation, you have the joy of salvation, you have this new experience of salvation. 
without anybody pushing you, anybody trying to follow up or whatever, you will discover the heart to begin to serve the Lord immediately. Not that, you know, you wait for another year, you wait for three years, you wait for five years. No, while the fire is still burning, while the assurance is still new that the time you truly commit yourself to his great service. Look at John chapter 4. We're reading from verse 28. Then the woman then left a water pot and went her way into the city and says to the man, which woman is this? The woman just met the Lord. A few minutes ago, she was again, you're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan, and you're asking water from me. And Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is talking to you, you will give him the water and you will ask him and he'll give you the living water. Ah, where are you going to get here? You don't have anything to drop from a father Jacob drank from this well and this and that and Jesus said you'll drink of this you'll thirst again you drink the water of this life and you're thirsty again for your sin you're thirsty again for your immorality you're thirsty again for your fornication you're thirsty again for your adultery but he that will get the water that I give him or give her, he will have that water bubbling from the heart unto everlasting life. Lord, give me this water. Okay, if I'm going to give you, go call your husband. Ah, uh, husband, I don't have any husband. What do you mean? Uh, Jesus then said, you've had five husbands. One man, not enough. Two men, not enough. And you've been going from man to man. And the person you're even staying with now is not your husband. Just, you know, just cohabiting together. You are a prophet. How did you know all that about my life? Anyway, when the Messiah comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said, I that speak unto you, I am he. And she believed immediately. She was converted. She accepted him. She believed him that this is the Christ and this is the Messiah. New life, a new day, a new moment. And at that same time, that's when this woman left her water pot. Jesus, you have my water pot. I surrender everything. You are surrender to Christ tonight. Your heart, your life, your decision, your destiny, you put it in the life of Christ tonight in Jesus' name. And the service began immediately. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and says unto the men look at verse 29 verse 29 come come started serving the lord inviting other people when you are really saved and you have the peace of god in your heart or your neighbors you'll be contacting them you're not go to church alone by yourself come and see a man which told me all things that ever I did is not this the Christ. Look at verse 30. In verse 30, then they went out of the city. His words were believable. Her words were persuasive and so all these men went out of the city and they came unto him unto christ look at that 42 in verse 42 and said unto the woman now we believe now we believe new convert that just got the living water of life eternal brought all these men to come 
and hear the words of Jesus and he said no we believe not because of thy saying for we have heard him ourselves and we know that this is indeed the Christ the savior of the world did you they became saved the point is early in her conversion she went out and she took part in the great service of the Lord in Mark chapter 5 reading here from verse 18 new convert new convert new convert and being involved immediately nobody pushing them nobody dragging them nobody forcing them here the service came out of their own volition mark chapter 5 verse 18 and when he was come unto the sheep he that had been possessed with the devil who had now been delivered and was in right mind that same day that deliverance took place that same day that release from the bondage of evil that same day it took place he prayed him that he might be with him he says i've been living in the tombs i'm going to go with you i'm going to live with you in verse 19 in verse 19 i will be it jesus suffered him not but says unto him go home to thy friends born again anew not long standing believer now you've got a testimony now you are delivered and you want to not just follow me no you must do something go back home to your friends and tell them how great things the lord has done for thee and as at compassion on thee look at verse 20 in verse 20 and he departed and began to publish in the capolis how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did marvel you see he, he got involved in this great service of the Lord that he was introducing people to Christ and the Bible says when when Jesus came back to that uh, community again they were waiting for him and many of them received him John chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 40 John chapter 1 looking at verse 41 of the two which heard John speak and followed him follows Christ was Andrew Simon Peter's brother look at verse 41 in verse 41 he first findeth his own brother Simon and says unto him we have found the Messiah which is being interpreted the Christ you see the people that have real salvation genuine salvation real conversion they are not whole they are not hiding the bible uh, you know behind newspaper they're not ashamed i'm not ashamed of the gospel of christ they tell the people that are nearest to them they are committed to the service of the lord who has saved them look at verse 42 and he brought him and he, Andrew, brought him, Peter, to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, beheld Peter, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. You, you, you see all these people, they came 
to know the Lord. And he came to believe on the Lord. And as they believed on the Lord, immediately nobody nominated them for church service. Nobody nominated them for church choir. Nobody nominated them for anything. But they took the message of the gospel, the good news, and the salvation of Christ and he told each everywhere. Now that you are born again, you're born again, maybe Thursday or Friday or Saturday or Sunday or Monday or today because I know that salvation is coming to you now. I said I know salvation is coming to you now. If you believe, as you believe, when you believe, the salvation of the Lord will come. You repent of your sin and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He will give you a very definite experience of forgiveness, of freedom from your sin. He'll give you an experience of genuine salvation. Give me a good amen. amen. And immediately you have that genuine salvation. This is how we know that the salvation is real. This is how we know that the forgiveness is definite with no shame. The first friend you meet, you're already serving the Lord and you're telling them, look at what I got and look at what you can get. And many people will follow you to the Lord Jesus in Jesus' name. And when you have a heart like that, that you really want to follow the Lord, you want to serve the Lord, you are not treating Jesus Christ like you know the waitress or the, they want serving food in a restaurant and you go there and serve me food and then you eat and then you are gone only when you're hungry again you come back only when you are uh, kind of sick again you come back when you don't treat jesus like a stranger you treat him like my savior like my lord and you say i'm going to follow jesus to the end no turning back no turning back i've decided anybody deciding there today i have decided to follow christ no turning back no turning back everybody i say praise the lord now Hallelujah. when i got born again the church where I was born again was far away from where I lived. And nobody, because all the members of the church, they were not in the town where I was living. At least I didn't see any. But on my own, I'll take money, I'll take transportation, I'll go to the church, gospel church. And then I'll take literature, church literature, and I gather some of the students I was teaching mathematics, I gather them together. I just wanted everybody to hear of their Savior that changed my life. Nobody pushed me to eat. Nobody said, now you're a worker. This is what to do. This is what not to do. I just served the Lord from that time. And praise the Lord. I'm still serving the Lord. Am I serving the Lord? Yes, I said, am I serving the Lord? Yes, I love you. I really appreciate you. And the good thing that has happened to me will happen to you. Yes. All these many years, sicknesses came. Up, and once I say, Jesus, sickness will vamos. Yes. Vanish away. That's what I'm passing on to you tonight. Then the final night, I want to put the key in your hand. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have genuine salvation. You have real definite healing. And from today, everywhere you go, the Lord will go before you. His life will be reproduced in your life. His grace will multiply in your life. 
the salvation you get today, the salvation you get in this GCK will be permanent in Jesus' name. And the healing and the deliverance and the miracle that happens to you today will continue. I said will continue. And even when you become as old as I am, you'll still be as strong as I am. And your life will continue in the grace of God. And if it so happens that we don't meet again, I want us to meet again. I want to come back. Abba is the best place you can come to preach the gospel. Not only that, I missed it uh, last year and uh, you know because I missed it last year I will come and come and come again and now if we meet again if Jesus has not come before I come back as we meet again the healing that you re receive now I will still see it on you and as you grow older and older and older, that healing will never leave your life. And the deliverance will never leave your life. Anywhere I go, I'll be remembering you. And if I have any challenge, get to our pastors, overseers here. They'll get in touch with me. And once they get in touch, I'll send SOS prayer. Your life is now going to start afresh, bright, brighter, brightest. It's about and eyes closed. It's about and eyes closed. Today, you want to have the real salvation genuine salvation that will remain and abide and everybody will see this man is saved this woman is saved wherever you are raise up your hand the lord will forgive you the lord will save you he'll give you genuine salvation and your life will be totally transformed you raise up your hand if you are raising up your hand this final day rise up wherever you are god bless you there god bless you there salvation forgiveness new life eternal life raise up that hand god bless you i can see you there raise up the hand and stand up and we're going to pray together the salvation we have now is going to be genuine salvation change of life transformation of life we're waiting if there's still anybody that ought to key in to this prayer you raise up your hand you stand up any location where you are online anywhere you want to have this kind of salvation that makes you steadfast makes you righteous brings a change a transformation of life we're praying now keep on standing radio television anywhere keep on standing father in jesus name we thank you lord because whosoever comes to you genuinely sincerely honestly you will in no wise reject and i pray as they come as they repent as they believe on the lord jesus christ forgive them change their lives change their hearts grant them genuine salvation grant them eternal life grant them a convincing experience that they know the lord they live for the lord and the grace to uphold the gospel 
grant to every one of them. Thank you, Lord. Let there be joy of salvation, assurance of salvation, and the determination to follow after the steps of Christ. And I pray as they rise, as they follow, as they walk with Christ, they will not fall back. You will not fall back. You keep on following until it comes to take you to heaven. Thank you, Lord. We know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep on standing. Our pastor, the moderating overseer tonight will come and lead us in this time of counseling. God bless you. Praise the Lord for the salvation he has given you. Praise the Lord. We thank God for that message. Glorious transformation to Christ's glorious triumph. What a blessed encounter. You saw it. You heard it. It is real in your life. Things will never remain ugly in your life again. In Jesus' name. Thank God for that message. Your life has been touched. Please, keep standing. Let our counselors now get to all the people making this decision tonight. No one should be left out. Please, all our counselors, let's distribute ourselves to the people standing up. Let's remember those in the large tent, those on the road. Nobody who has taken this decision tonight should be left out. Get their records. Please, all of us, children of God, who have decided to follow the Lord, appreciating that Christ left heaven and came and paid the price. Satan has no right to have dominion over you again. You reject him. Reject him from now. And the Lord will keep you by his grace. Fill that form. If you can write, please write in capital letters. If you can't, our counselors will help you. Give them your name correctly. And our counselors, please write in capital letters in upper case. Then give them your address. Also, your cell phone number. It should be 11 digits. Our counselors, please cross check. You're not preaching. You're just getting this information on the decision slip. As you give them, please guide them. If there is no house number, a clear street address, there must be somewhere around you that helps to identify where you reside. Please give them the name of that particular spot. The nearest place that is near where you are and through which you can be located. Because now, You've taken a decision to follow Christ to heaven. Bye-bye to Satan. Bye-bye to anything sinful. By the grace of God, that power will come upon you. Look at that woman the Lord encountered. A chain took place. And she started right there. Look at the other man. He went and started publishing. That's what will happen from now. And I pray that God will keep you in this decision that you've taken today. All our counselors, please, let's move fast. There are people far behind who lifted up their hands. Please reach out to them. On the right, on the left, in the front, in the middle. Make sure as they're standing, you get to them quickly. All our workers, all our choristers, it's not only for the ushers, please. All workers, I cancel us now. We help all our brethren that have taken this decision because they are now the children of God, brothers and sisters in the faith, we will help them to abide and keep following the Lord. And by the grace of God, like our Father in the Lord has said, if the Lord comes earlier than we expect, our Father in the Lord will see you in heaven. We shall all meet at the feet of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So please, it's a serious business. Make sure you give them your correct name. Because now, 
You are a child of God, a brand new person. You are not going to be like the person you were before. You are now a brand new man, a brand new woman, a brand new boy, a brand new girl. You've been brought into God's family. You now belong to God's family. You will get to the kingdom of God at the end of your journey. Let our counselor say, please give them the correct information about you. Give them your cell phone number. Let them have your correct identity that anytime you could be reached and helped. That's how God helped us. By the grace of God, we heard the word like you've heard tonight. And we took the decision to follow the Lord. He's been faithful. The Lord has a power to keep you. No matter what is happening in the world today. So please help our counselors to get all the information that will help us to keep assisting you in this journey to heaven. Our counselors, please move fast. We should not forget those in the large tent there. A lot of people there. Please let's reach out to them. Our ushers, our choristers, all workers across board, please. Let's distribute ourselves now and write legibly, write clearly, write in capital letters. And then God bless you. God bless you. Remember, another time of great explosion of miracles will come. So no one should leave now. God, God is ready to do something supernatural, glorious, wonderful, triumphant in your life. I want to assure you by the Spirit of God that every problem represented here tonight that have been brought here we never resist the prayer of the servant of God when he comes can the church shout amen? amen miracle is coming miracle is coming counselors please help let's move fast and after you've taken the information from our new babes in Christ still stand around them Let's be around all. So when the miracle prayer comes, it will assist them to do what they've never been able to do before. Because God's hand will be, up, will be upon all here tonight. Please, all brothers and sisters who have taken the decision to follow Christ, indicate by standing up and wave your hand to those counselors who are moving in the midst of us. Call their attention and let them know that your record has not been taken. Don't allow yourself to be omitted in the record by all our counselors tonight. Help them to take your details. Let's not forget those at the rear, far behind. Please, let's get to them. And on the left, this way, let's get to the people at this extreme end of my left. Cancel us, please. Let's spread. No one should be left out, please. Those on the road, reach out to them because this is the last night. May no one that has come into this mega mall be missing in the salvation of the Lord. So please do that. I'm taking this decision tonight to follow the Lord. Let's help them. Let's go to the street. Let's go to the large tent. Let's come on the field here. Right. Middle. Left. Front and back. And online, those of all that have taken the decision, remember, 
you have to give this information that you've given your life to Christ, your social media, your Android phone, device, please click on the link. There, gckheadquarters.org slash connect. You click it below your player. Please visit it and fill out the form so we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Also, if you listen to the message tonight via radio or television and you have taken the decision to follow Christ, please send your name your cell phone number and your location address via SMS, that's through text, or WhatsApp. Use this number plus 234 I repeat. You listen via radio or television. Please, as you've taken the decision to follow the Lord, send your phone number, your address, your location via SMS or WhatsApp through this number I'm calling now. Plus 234 915 4 Four four nine two six three. Remember, just this coming Sunday, there will be special converse rally. That's May fifth, in all our churches globally. So, in every place you are, and you've taken the decision, locate the nearest branch of this ministry. Please. Don't be missing out in that special meeting. More will be given you. Our pastor will be happy hearing that you are standing strong, abiding in this decision. You will grow to be a giant in the faith, a mighty instrument in the hand of the devil. And God will make your life wonderful in Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. And here in Abba, that Sunday 5th, in all our group headquarters, to make it easier and nearer to you, we shall be having believers' banquet. That Sunday, 3 p.m. Across, across Abba City here. We are expecting you to be there. And the Lord will bless you. I said the Lord will bless you. So remind those who have given their life to Christ on Thursday to yesterday and maybe for one reason or the other they are not here. So please remind them if you know them, if you brought them, tell them that there will be a special believers banquet on Sunday 5th in all our group headquarters here in about time 3 p.m. Please, our counselors, if we have taken the records of all who have taken decision tonight, can you indicate by raising the flag up? I'm seeing just a few. Okay, please, if we have covered all of them, what about on the left here? I've not seen the flag this way on the left. Because the Lord moved wonderfully. The message was pungent. And the Lord touched many lives. Okay. Near the entrance there. Are we all right? Wave the flag. Well, if we are done, if we've gotten all the details. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. We are told appreciation means application for more. 
We need to thank God for what he has done. That's why when you hear praise the Lord, you shout hallelujah. Say, praise the Lord. Our Father in the Lord is ready. As he comes now to declare God's miracle, believe him. You will receive the miracle. Yeah. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I will receive my miracle. I will receive, I will receive my healing. This final night, you must not carry another person's load back home. What I mean is, sickness is Satan's load. Don't carry it for him. All that disease is Satan's load. You will not carry his load for him. Satan, get your load back. Yeah. I said, say it now. Satan yeah. is gone. Yeah. You raise up your hand and you lay the other hand where you have the challenge. And tonight, the Lord will heal you. Yeah. That load of sickness, that load of infirmity, that load of incurable disease, terminal disease, is gone. Yeah. Raise up that hand, lay the hand, lay the other hand, when you have the challenge. When you hear the final amen, it's done. Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, yeah. we well, thank you that this final night is a night of miracle. A night of healing, a night of deliverance. In your love, in your mercy, your compassion, your power, your might, visit everyone in Jesus' name. Sickness, whatever your name, disease, whatever your description, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Disease in the head, in the blood system, in the stomach, in the bone, I command you now. Be healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Swelling in any part of the body. And whatever is the root cause of that swelling, vanish away in Jesus' name. Blindness, be my sight. The Lord is touching you right now. Receive your bright eyesight in Jesus' name. Deaf and dumb, miracle of hearing, miracle of speaking. Come upon your life right now. Lord, do it for everyone in Jesus' name. That with that hand come afresh. Yeah. And let the strength of the Lord be on that with that hand and become as normal as the other. Yeah. That short leg grow out in Jesus' name. Yeah. Arthritis in the waist, arthritis of the knees. Arthritis in your joints, arthritis, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. Paralysis, just on that wheelchair, on crutches, I pray the power of the Lord will come upon your body right now. Where there is weakness, I command strength. Where you are just impotent and you cannot even stand, I command healing to come on your body now in Jesus' name. Every chain of the devil, every madness coming from the devil, every sin that is the work of Satan is destroyed from your body. You're free. You are free. 
you are healed. You are delivered. And I pray that this healing, this deliverance, this miracle will be permanent in your life. Lord, confirm it in everyone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It is done. It is.